Hi, I'm Alex Bowers, and welcome to Leading with Evidence in Schools, Data and Research Literacy. In this welcome and introduction video, I'm going to talk through the different issues that we're going to cover in this uh, course to think about how we use data and research evidence in schools more effectively as teachers and school leaders. So welcome to the course. So the goals of the course are a focus on data and research literacy in schools. So the first goal, how to inform your decisions with valid and reliable forms of data. So we have all kinds of data in schools. And for this part of the course, we're going to focus on assessment data, be it grades or test scores. But there are all kinds of forms of data in schools. And we're also going to talk about all those other kinds of uh, data, be they um, data from like written coursework from your students, uh, surveys of teachers or parents, or discipline or attendance data. There's all kinds of data, and educators are looking for ways to think about using that data in new ways. And this course will provide you the tools to begin to think about and have a strong common language in your school about using these kinds of data. Second, how to critique and select the best forms of assessments for the goals that you and your teachers have for your students. So this course is all about helping you figure out how to put forward the ideas that you know are the big instructional improvement ideas in your school, where you need to go with your students. But then how do you find and think about assessments that are going to help you understand if you're making progress on those goals? This part of the course will help you find and critique and think about the validity and reliability of assessments in your schools. And then third, how to select best practices from what works to choose interventions that have been shown to work in schools just like yours. So there's lots and lots of research in schools uh, and throughout the research literature and interventions that you could choose. But how do you go about choosing from the myriad different types of education research that are out there? We're going to talk through how to find and then select and critique different types of research. Not every kind of research is going to work in your school. And it's not a yes or no dichotomy either. There's a to what extent or to what degree the research might be able to work or not work in your school. And you can adapt and take the best pieces of the research, understanding what the big issues are as far as context and generalizability, such as is this, uh, was this research done for students that are like mine or in uh, subjects that are like mine? And how different are they? And where are the big issues on figuring out which are going to work for which students? So in thinking about the course, I like to think about a Venn diagram, where we have data in schools, research use, and instructional improvement. So again, data in schools, data are all kinds of data. And we're going to think about not only assessment data, like standardized test scores and grades, but also, again, written forms of data. So essays can be data. Uh, the budget for your school might be a really interesting data, the actual document itself. Um, surveys of uh, how happy your parents are, how happy your teachers are. Are your students uh, graduating on time and going on to college? What kinds of courses are they taking? These are all the different kinds of data that we can use in schools. For research use, there's over 20,000 research papers published every year in education research. How are you supposed to go through and think about all these different kinds of research? Well, there's different resources that we can look at, and I'm going to train you on how to go through the websites, especially the U.S. Department of Education's What Works Clearinghouse, to be able to understand how do you choose informed types of research interventions that, are going to, that will work for your students in your context, in the subject areas that you need. And then instructional improvement, a purpose towards which you're trying to work uh, for an instructional goal in your school. Every school needs to improve, and there's areas that we're all working on. Having that purpose and moving forward towards instructional improvement is a big issue across schools, and we're going to have a, a lot of discussions about that kind of work. Now, with the Venn diagram, there's the overlaps. And so let's talk a little bit about the overlaps and how I see them and what we're going to talk about in this class. So if we look first at data in schools overlapped with instructional improvement, I like to think of this as what but not how. So we know what the issue is, we have the data, and we know where we want to go. We have a purpose and we know the instructional improvement area that we want to go to. But we don't know what intervention to use. And so in a lot of schools when this happens, uh, if you're not uh, really well trained in being able to go out and find the research evidence, 
a lot of different times we just invent it. Uh, we'll invent a new instructional intervention and try something, and that's great. But there's a lot of really good evidence that we can bring into that decision that we're going to talk about when we think about research use. So data use in schools uh, overlapped with instructional improvement is missing the research use piece. But let's look at research use overlapped with instructional improvement, where we're missing the data in schools. Well, I talk about this as how without context. So we may have an intervention that we know works for specific students in specific places that pushes towards an instructional improvement goal. But we might not have the data that shows the extent to which that intervention might work in our school. And so using the data in your school is all about understanding and seeing your students and how are we going to be able to use interventions for the, our, the very specific issues that we have with our students in our schools. So research use overlapped with instructional improvement is missing the data from our schools. And then the last overlap is data in schools overlapped with research use at the bottom. And here I put it as good ideas, but I made it with a question mark. So it's really good ideas. And so we get a lot of really good ideas when we look at the data in our schools and all the different kinds of research that's out there. But without a purpose around instructional improvement, it's just good ideas in isolation. And so in this course, we're going to bring together each of these pieces. When we have all three in concert together, this is called evidence-based improvement cycles. And we're going to talk through the research and theories around this work. And across this four weeks of this class, you're going to receive training and an opportunity to talk to other uh, people throughout the course who are teachers and leaders struggling with the same issues that you are about bringing these three pieces of the course together for interventions in your school to make progress with your students. So this is a four-week course. Uh, it's 20 hours total time commitment, so we're uh, aiming for about five hours per week. There'll be opportunities to engage with like-minded teachers and leaders on structured discussion boards uh, throughout the entire four weeks. There'll be a few quizzes for understanding, and then completely optional at the end of the class, if you'd like, you can do an integrated final project, which is a, uh, about a five-page paper or so, where you're going to look at different types of interventions, uh, using the skills that we're going to talk about in this class around the data in your school towards an instructional intervention and purpose that you'd like to make in your school. Some kind of change around data and evidence use. And we'll give you feedback on that. But that's completely optional. So that's the course. I'd like to welcome everyone to the course. And I'm looking forward to working with everyone.